Girl, 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 you know I need, you know I need, you know I need, you know I need you to get this hair redone, hair redone, hair redone. It's not redone, it's retwisted. What's up, y'all? Another week of Locks Retwist. We back. Days in effect. Monday mix out intro. All of our content is out. Yes. All in yes. the description, so go peep that. If you ain't peeped it, you're late. Yes, very sleep today. Of course, we're talking about in the retwist Russian hey, Russia. producer. Yes. As well as rapper artist Charles Hamilton. And, and to, to recap, to give you a reason why we're talking about these two artists, this week's topic is talking about paths and the dates and trying to find your path and navigating your path and being able to adjust and uh, and almost grow with the path as right. you go forward and encounter new obstacles and stuff like that. So uh, we talking about, I mean, lately we changed the format of the, of the retwist up to talk about one person that's, you know, conquering, conquering. the days, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And one person that's simply, uh, it are, is not so struggling We're, with the yeah, days. Yeah. So you can't say they're failing. Yeah, the yeah, days. they're not failing, but they're not conquering. So that's the thing. Uh, <laughs> they're definitely not conquering. So we can we're gonna discuss that today. First off, we gonna go with Russian. Yes, All right, so. Russian Jamaican producer. Yeah. Hit maker. Yeah. Got the fire. He looked like Wiz. I mean, not Wiz, but Swizz. Swizz son type. Uh, Jamaican Swizz. <laughs> but. <laughs> We out here, yeah. He put me on a Russian earlier this week. He was talking about how he's just blowing off the scene, making moves. He's doing and, um, it. I was like, I ain't even heard this dude. So let me you've go. heard some of his beats. And that's the funny part. If yeah, you listen yeah. to Vibes Cartel, you've heard exactly. some of his beats. Because sure. he was that man's right. I mean, we won't get into that. All right, so Russian, Russian been working with Vibes since like 2008, all right? Like literally since two, almost, almost 10 years now. And hopefully on the 10 year reunion, 10 year anniversary of them working together, Vibe should be a free man. Free the world, boss. So we gonna go for it. I say it every damn show if I need to. <laughs> All right, so he been working with Vibe since 08 when he created the Liberty Rhythm when he had Vibes on that. And this is when he first started attending Manly College of the Visual and Performing Arts out in Kingston, Jamaica. And um, he was making some moves out there. You know, he was he met Vibes, obviously. He was going to school for music? Yeah, he was, okay. going, to, he was going to school for, uh, for music, just doing his thing out there. And um, just you know, he was—I think it was a freshman when he when he hooked up with some other producers who had some links in the in the industry. You know how they running the I island. mean, you know how 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 like close knit Jamaica is as as a music industry down there as it is for the music music industry and stuff. And um, they had some hits. It was like three of them. You know, they had some hits. If he was one of him and then two other people, they'd make a beast together. It's probably crazy. Exactly. And um, sure. definitely got noticed. He had a song with he got vibes on the rhythm. Wherever he had his first rhythm then in 08. Now in 2010, he ended up leaving college. He was like, you know what, like, this ain't enough. Like, I gotta start making moves. Cause the rhythm jumped off and he was like, all right, this, this is what I need to be doing. Making money, you know what I mean? Making music. So in 2010, he produced the Life Suite track for Vibes Cartel and it received general acclaim internationally. It pretty much like blew up for him. And that was like his first big track with him. And he just quit school. At, he, that's when he really quit school. Like he was like, I'm really done. It's not even an option no run more. The island. Like it's not even an option no more. And after that, he pretty much worked with Vibes nonstop for like four years, making tracks with other people, of course, in the time because he just making beats on beats. And he was trying to produce in a whole other network of, you know, his own little network of, of musicians and stuff. Gotten to recently. Yeah, I mean, think about it. It's been seven years since then. And he's he's done, he hasn't slowed down. It's not like when Vibes went to jail, he he went to jail. Like, he was just, uh, he was still most working. Most recently, he, he put up on his IG a uh, picture with Vin Diesel. So he's he's been really out here lately. You know that. Yeah, he, he got the track with Sean Paul that just went platinum. Okay. And that's just tapped into the Latin markets as well. So he's just producing on a world level, yeah, which is I talk about it as well on the show. That's where we're headed. Uh, nobody creates a genre; you just create world music. And yes, that's, that's and at the end where of the day, he's that's at, the... and where he's kind of pushing that path down that world music, that yeah. world sound. Yeah, I mean, and then him are... being Jamaican himself, like just building that bridge between the people who run, you know the 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 sound in there like vibes vibes is like granddaddy to everybody out here that's that's making music the right new now man. not i can't say everybody but yeah. like I mean the, the sound like you can't say it, everybody has respect for vibes yeah a lot of people majority the of the art, yeah they ain't nobody really gonna be beefing with vibes on some on some f vibes stuff but they're gonna be like <laughs> okay i can say they might because people just like controversy but i 
they don't mean it. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't really mean it. It's like somebody come for Jay-Z. Like, this is a different story. I can't even compare him to Jay-Z, for real. But, um, I ain't gonna go that far. Close. Yeah, but, but, um, back to, back to Russia, man. So he was working with Vibes on a regular basis up until he went to prison in 2014, dropping tracks like, uh, like Straight Jeans and Fitted, which he was receiving awards for and stuff. Uh, Lurk, Look Pawn, We, and New Jordans that he dropped in 2014, right before uh, Vibes went to jail. And, um, and at that time, he also chose to just completely rebrand. Because at this point, he started getting real, like, no, people were starting to peep this man, like, right. oh, like, you know, what's up? And people Russian. Googling him, and they just Googling the word Russian, and they just find it in Russians, and they find it in <laughs> Russia. And he's like, okay, I gotta switch that up too. So he switched up the name, spelling to Russian with a V. Because, you know, it's 2014, it was around that, that, that area where, you know. I mean, that's where we're headed as well. I mean, Using it worked out. Numbers and symbols and shit for other letters. But it definitely worked it's out. It's fire, though. though, yeah. Definitely worked out. And uh, he's been doing well, man. But, like, the thing is, with the path, at that point, he he took, he had a certain path. Like, okay, I want to do music. I know that. So he was like, I'm going to go to school for it. I'm going to go to school and do music. And he's doing that with other people have been doing music, still doing it. And at one point, he was like, I'm doing music right now. Like, so my path has changed because new information is coming to play. You know what I mean? I'm, I got new I got new stuff going on now. I'm right. working with Vibes, you know. Big main people that are making actual money off music, so. People are listening to my music. People are noticing this. Why am I in school? Just dropped out to, to like work harder. harder. Yeah. Exactly. And um, look at where he's at now. Exactly. Salute. Came Russia. to a point and he switched up his name. That's a whole nother thing, you know, just be like, okay, new information coming to play. Like, okay, people can't access my information because they're spelling my name this way. So I got to go about it a different way. And he's just switching it up, adapting as he go forward. Not, it's not selling out, it's, it's learning, it's growing. You know what I mean? Like, becoming that's a thing. brand. He, he's, he's made himself a brand. And obviously, most of the hot producers in America. Metro, mm -hmm. DJ Mustard, these people are making themselves a brand yeah. as producers. And they not new. These like Metro been out for years, like Mustard been out for years, but you know it's, it's a new age of things and yeah. salute to Russian for trying to capitalize on that. He obviously is that pushing boundaries and taking Jamaican production into a whole exactly unfamiliar water territory type thing. So. Exactly. So if y'all wanna peep any information about um, about Russian and about his recent, at least his recent accolades, like the track with Sean Paul that went platinum. Um, it's not Sean Paul's track, by the way. It's just a feature with Sean Paul on there. But uh, it, you know, blew up, went platinum. It peaked the number ten on the Billboard Latin Songs chart. And so, if you want to look at anything that he's been on, or even hook up with Russian on some like keeping in touch with whatever he on, whatever music he dropping, um, peep the link in the description, man. We will yes, have a link sorry. to the the the, uh, the article by the Gleaner. It's a Jamaican, Jamaican Gleaner, yeah, yeah. JamaicanGleaner.com, so it's going. But okay, Salute with that being Russian. said, yeah, that man conquering the days, done, figured out the path, did not settle, and uh, he figured it out, man. For Definitely real. something to commend him for. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, we're going to go into Charles Hamilton, though. Next up. Yeah, Charles Hamilton. I had to, earlier, we had, man, or earlier in the show, I had to I had to change the way my screen was set up. I was looking at this man's <laughs> video of, okay, he just, be, he just be catching L's, all right, for a little bit. It's, I like Charles Hamilton's music, to be honest, though. So, I man. feel you, and it's a, it's, a, it's a different type of music. It's not I'm like, always rooting for Charles Hamilton. It's not like a different type, I guess. It's just, he just presents it. It was a different lane, for sure. I yeah. see him in that uh, Kid Cudi kind of Lupe. They all kind of yeah, came out in yeah. the same kind you're of right, realm. You're right. Back in 08, um, they both they all kind of like blew up in the same area in the same audience type of thing. Um, but he started off with a couple rap groups early on back in 08. Um, but you end up oh, actually you end up going solo in 08 because he was like his time, you know. So before he was with rap. yeah he was with he was with Not a couple familiar with that yeah yeah he was with a couple people because um, he was going he had the um, oh yeah the one man the. Uh, what were they called? The, um, what's it? All City Chess Club. Yeah, that was what they was called. He had the group then. Yeah, he was going with them out in New York and he was going hard. Um, but he ended up going solo in a way because, I mean, obviously they didn't blow up. So he was like, I need more 
I need more work to be done. So he left. During that year, he ended up dropping a series of mixtapes called the Hamiltonization Process. He dropped so many <laughs> free music. So many mixtapes. A series that of mixtapes. That is commendable. <laughs> and dropped the Pink Lava Lamb debut album at the end of the year on the 8th. Um, and that actually was received pretty well by the community. They actually, it was it was cool. It, did, like it didn't do great because he was still independent type of thing, but it did. It was it was received pretty was well. Was he selling it? He was selling that project. I believe he yeah he okay. sold that. And at that point, that's when he started getting you know some play. He got on the XSL freshman, um, as well as getting signed at Interscope in '09. So that all that was, all those moves, the Hamiltonization process, series of mixtapes, and the Pink Lava Room, um, Lava Lamp. Uh, album ended up leading up to him getting signed. So obviously his his change in path to be like I'm going solo um, was a good move, at least in that first year. Like you know, it was literally one year he came out and just did all that, got signed. You know, um, he said Interscope. Yes. Interscope seemed like they was in the that was in their cash. They're in the cash grab type of. They were running back then though. He was in the same. He was in the same area as like. He was getting, well, he got signed by Interscope, which at the time, think about what they was dropping. It was, they had just came off of like 50s stuff. Like they was trying to get into a whole nother era. Yeah, it almost. was a new, it's a switch of the era. That's why it's like, they almost changed it up. I forget who else they signed around that time, but I feel like it was a bunch of people. They were trying to push to be more commercial almost. Yeah. They couldn't make that kind of transition and it kind of ended up affecting the career on the whole. Definitely, and during that next year, I mean, Charles Hamilton went off the deep end, lack of a better term. Um, dude, uh, he started to exhibit symptoms of bipolar disorder, which he was later diagnosed with. Um, but when he was doing that, he didn't know. Like, he was just spazzing. Just coping, yeah. Yeah, he was just out here doing stuff, just thinking it was normal. Like, it wasn't normal, obviously. And due to the controversy caused social media, man, man, even one, he, he was, on the street. Yeah, we were watching that video earlier. And he was interviewing this girl that was his girl, his ex-girl, right? And he's he's talking mess to her and she like not having it. I got a verse for you ready to go. And she said, I wrote a mean 16 about you today. A and mean 16. And he's like, okay, battle, battle. And everybody like battle. So she she rapped this stuff or whatever. She like singing and vibing. It's just she said she do poetry, so it was like a more like a vibe type of thing. She wasn't really spitting. But he came back at her and talked and basically mentioned how she had to get an abortion. Jeez. And it was like, it was messed up. Like he low-key deserved to get punched in the face, but he got punched in the face. He was said some stuff to her and then he was just dropping, he was just rapping at her and she just hit him with the cross. I don't know. It was that was a mean, mean right hook. Maybe we'll put that video in the link in the description. Bro, wait. So go check that out. That's a mean right hook right there. <laughs> okay, yeah, man. And he got another one where he was literally rapping at Penn State with fans in the cypher and he ended up losing the rap battle. He literally lost the rap battle. He got killed by his own fan. So that's a bad look, bro. After all of this stuff going on, it was just like back to back to back. He was taking some L's to say the least. Major, and I even like L's, like this L's on the internet back then. So it was yeah. even, and if it was blowing up on the internet back then, like it was difficult. It's bad for you. It's making it on TV. You getting talked on on every radio show. Interscope calling you like, what's going on? And eventually- Put a hold on your albums. Exactly. And then it ended up leading up to him getting dropped by the label, um, I believe that year. Was he dropping a bunch of uh, like mixtapes and projects because they were holding his album? That's he cool. was, I don't, I don't know exactly why he was, but he was dropping hella mixtapes. I feel like it, it could have been because of the fact they wouldn't drop his music. Um, and after that, he didn't have anybody to sign him. So he was like, I'm just gonna keep dropping music. So he dropped music. I mean, he even went to the hospital, came out and was still dropping music for the next four or five years up until like 2014 still, you know, still dropping music. He dropped a project this year, you know, so. He's on the uphill. He dropped 27 projects this year. This year? Yes, he dropped them all on one day. <laughs> all right, I remember when it happened, all right? He dropped 27 projects this year. Is he signed with someone as well? I think he, he's actually, he's signed in Republic. Republic. Yeah. Okay. He's signed in Republic right now, but. So he is on the uphill, he, woo. But again, like those, <laughs> those projects weren't for sale. So it's just, 
I don't know. I'm sure he can tour and whatnot as well. So he's he's got a brand behind him. He, he tour. Pink Lava Lamb. He was the, always the man rocking some pink shit. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Talking but, crazy. So I mean, that's the thing though. So, but yeah, that's the thing. So I mean, he kind of didn't figure out his path. I mean, he ran into some obstacles. It's not he over. He ran into some obstacles, definitely. And he tried to get over them, but obviously it didn't work initially. So he's trying, like I said, he's still- The days definitely threw off He his... continues to drop music. He's still dropping music, but whether or not he's gonna be able to come back is really up to him. But like I said, man, we do, we did have the video of the uh, Cypher at Penn State of him getting, him losing, him getting Jade on the Cypher, and yeah, we'll getting, link all that in the description. And him getting Jade by the X. Haven't seen that before. Because the one with him getting punched in the face, that's too funny, man. That is just too much. He, she really just, he was rapping, and she just punched him in that the face. That wasn't a no regular. She hit like a, man, that was a right hook. That was look a, at his face, bro. She looked like she boxed or some shit. Right hook. <laughs> Right in his Ooh. jaw, bro. He was still rapping, so I just don't even know. Like, that, so, yeah, that link is in the description. Yeah, that's all in the description. Go man. check that out. Including the Complex article talking about the 30 rappers that have fallen off in the past 20 years. I'm, so, like I said, I'm still rooting for that man. Charles, Charles Samuelson's Samuelson. the first name on there at number 30, so y'all can peep the other 29 people, including Cannabis, KRS One and Slick Rig being listed on there, so I can just Slick and Ice Cube, so I can peep that, but on your own time. But yeah, for sure, man. That's, that's the retwist for this week, man. Again, talking about past in the days and the Monday mix is out. All of it. The intro is out. All the story time is out. The topic is out. So if you ain't peeping all that, you late. Go check the link in the description. Of course, you're tuning into the Q channel, Q brand salute. So go subscribe. Go exactly. peep the rest of our videos. That's right, man. We're just getting started. The days, of course, is in effect. Yeah. AT out. Lock out. Yeah. Oops.